What's up everybody? 2020 kind of sucks. So here's a free texture pack to hopefully make that a little bit better. It contains about 30 materials and it has six patterns so you can mix and match. They're PBR textures, so they should work with most render engines. And in this tutorial, we're gonna cover how to set them up in Cycles or EV, which is a really simple process in Blender. This lesson's actually lifted from one of my MoGraph Mentor courses on texturing, all of which are 40% off, so I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. If you're feeling lazy and you don't wanna set these textures up yourself, if you head over to my Patreon, you can actually get a pre-set up project there where I've already set everything up for Cycles and EV. With that being said, let's get started. So let's take a look now at how we can go ahead and import our materials into an object. So I'm just gonna work with this kettle because it has one material making it easier, but you would just go ahead and create multiple materials if you had multiple materials, which if you view Splendor at all, you're probably already familiar with that workflow. So let's go ahead here and we'll call this one kettle texture. And what you'll wanna do is make sure that you have Node Wrangler um, add-on enabled. So if you go to your edit preferences, add-ons, you can do node and make sure you have node wrangler add-on set. Now, if you have the same default settings as me, when you create a new texture, we'll create this principal BDSDF node. And what you can now do with that node wrangler add-on is just hit control shift T and that will bring up this option here. And then what you can do is go into your textures folder and I can scroll down here to kettles, grab all the kettle nodes, hit that, and it will automatically apply those to our node. Now, one thing worth noting is this is for a PBR metal workflow. If you notice that it's not um, importing some of your materials, you can come into the node wrangler preferences and you can go down to the edit texture settings here and you can actually add kind of the prefixes or suffixes that you're using here if it's not recognizing the ones that you've used. If you use the default Substance Painter ones, it'll work. Go ahead, X out of there. Now it won't bring in an ambient inclusion node. So if you wanna do that, what you'll need to do is just import another image texture. And then you can use a mix RGB node and use like a multiply mode or a soft light mode to kind of blend those over one another. Though I usually find that I'm fine without it. Now, if you want this to be truly physically accurate, you can turn down the specular there and that will give you a physically accurate rendering uh, supposedly. I tend to leave mine at 0.5 because I feel like it uh, bodes well with the more stylistic look I'm going for of having kind of brighter highlights and shinier, glossier elements and things like that. Sometimes I'll drop it down to 0.25 as I notice the handle here is being a little kind of washed out. Now, in terms of displacement, there is an extra step in order to add so that you can use displacement there. But let's break down how it imported those nodes. It didn't do anything special. It just kind of created the preset for you. But the way you would do it is go ahead, import each image texture manually, and you would want your base color set to sRGB, and you'd want the rest set to non-color. You just plug those directly into the node, metallic and roughness for the normal map. You would insert a normal map node in between. You can control the strength here. Displacement map goes over here into the material output and you have it set to object space by default and you can change the scale there. Most of the time, a scale of one is gonna be far too strong. We'll go over how to make that visible in the viewport now. And then back here, it has a mapping node where it's pointing things into a UV, giving you a mapping node, kind of feeding that out there. So that's kind of the breakdown there. Now, when you're in cycles, you'll want to make sure that your feature set is to experimental. And then what we will do is we will grab this kettle here. We can add a subdivision surface Then we can click adaptive and then we'll come down here to the material settings. We'll click our material. And if we scroll down, you see that we have these different options here and under settings, it's kind of confusing because there's a displacement directly above it, but below displacement is settings. And for the surface, we have the option of setting bump only to displacement only or displacement and bump. And if I do that, it will now account for displacement in our material. As I said, one is almost going to be too much. I usually end up at 0.1 or sometimes even smaller increments of 0.0. So let's go 0.05 and see what that gives us here. 
Now I normally wouldn't even use displacement for here, but you can already see that looks much more natural. So that's how you go about importing your textures into Blender so that you can get them set up to render. This object rendering lighting setup will be included. Also, there is a final setup so that you can see the full kitchen scene put together, how I lit that and how all the textures were imported.